This is you. You love scrolling through Pinterest and collecting new inspiration for this, or this, or this, or this aesthetic. Yeah, you're kind of, sort of, really obsessed with all of them. But whenever you do decide to finally invest in becoming the dream it girl you've always wanted to be, the echoing silence of your wallet is telling you a different story. So you are stuck with the bland things you have at hand, aka this one pair of jeans you usually just throw on with a random shirt and sneakers, which if you were Bella Hadid would be considered street style, but you're you, so depending on the last time you showered, we're more so headed towards street rat. But you got it all wrong in the first place. Your problem is not your lack of clothes. It's your lack of vision. So let me present to you my one and only talent, making the most out of being broke. Get this party started with Cameron, and she's rocking a leather trench coat, black turtleneck, 90s glasses, and high top vans. Cameron might give off pretentious artists from Brooklyn vibes, but chances of her making a your mom joke within the first three minutes of you meeting her are in the 90 percentile, so she is a true paradox in that she really is a sucker for anything artsy, but if she happened to run into one of those, what are you listening to, street interviews, her answer would most likely be the medieval version of hips don't lie, so um, it's a bop, okay, don't, don't judge me. Next up we got Kara, she's working a baseball tee and cap, sports bra, and yes, the same lens as before because look, I said this video is for broke people so I'm not gonna pull a one jeans but um, 200 different shirts, shoes, and accessories on you, that is a scam, we're basic and broke and so is Kara. And like, with her Aries, Sun, Mars, Mercury, and Saturn, she's too occupied with being a true alpha anyways and would rather spend her day ready to defend your honor at any given time. Now we got Camille, and she's rocking a Julia Roberts, Aaron Brockovich inspired look, aka a see-through blouse with a dark little spicy bralette underneath and some, okay, if I'm being honest, way too small BDSM like strappy heels on her feet. Like, I was struggling. My feet were on literal fire, but mom, you can calm down. I will not make a foot-centered bondage only fans. It's fine. But what I will do is smell some water and pretend I'm about to single-handedly take down capitalism itself as I, on top of that, single mom who works two jobs because that's what it's like to be a woman these days our third candidate is cassandra or at least i feel like that's what she would sound like well she's got a thrifted baby tee with some chunky loud ass heels on to make sure everyone notices whenever she enters a room because she loves giving uncalled for advice and sucking on things pretending it's a cigarette hee <laughs> hee wink wink and just basically being the rich and everyone thinks is depressed and has an alcohol problem whereas in reality i feel like she's probably the happiest in the room but simply because she doesn't care what people end up thinking of her people are scared Next up, we got our DIY queen, Claire. She wears a tucked under, not tucked in turtleneck with an oversized white blouse on top, some retro Adidas on her feet, and a Burberry-esque, all right, esque, emphasis is on Burberry-esque trench coat she got off of Vinted for seven bucks, all right? Do not pay more than seven bucks. And in the spirit of being broke, she tends to want to DIY anything, which sometimes, if you um, take a look at the white paint stains we got going on on the floor, does not work out. Yeah, I'm sorry, mom. Okay, so listen up. Courtney, just like a lot of other girls too, once had a dream of becoming a model. And all that dream gave her was um, an eating disorder, body dysmorphia, and existential self-doubt. But, however, besides the mentally ill core, she also gained a lot of knowledge on what the perfect model of beauty set consists of and tries her best to copy it so that at least she can pretend she's not not a model. She's just off duty 24-7. And that means crop top, unbuttoned shirt, feet, suicide shoes, and this aura of just always looking on the go. Caitlyn is the one friend that loves the pre-party more than the actual party because although she's outgoing and extroverted, I feel like first and foremost she's obsessed with growing her catalog of personas she can categorize people into and in order to draw set people in, she does not shy away with using her bralette that is just right in order to not be classified as too small as a shirt with an oversized leather blazer on top in case men decide to be creepy and the same. Like I said, this is about diverse but simple combinations, strappy heels. 
Next up, we got Caroline. Caroline couldn't care less about her own social media, but she will make you stop and post so that you will have a collection of fire pics at the end of every night. Because she loves hyping her friends up, and oftentimes that means getting into weird poses herself in order to get that one she ate angle. Therefore, she's wearing a simple striped crop top with a cute little brace bralette for details underneath and a gray sweater tight diagonally instead of horizontally to underline her casual and on the go and I will kick that grandma off of the cliff if she's not going to get out of my shot persona. Now we have Campbell. I feel like she's addicted to TikTok, so naturally she would dress like any other generic TikTok person out there, and any TikTok fit needs an oversized jacket, a crop top, baggy-ish jeans, and some retro details to just like, you know, make the whole drip drip. And also, I feel like her red flag is anybody saying, TikTok is so cringe. I don't know what people are doing on there. Watch horoscope dance videos or what? Because like, A, if you think like this, you're as exciting as that girl dipping her burrito into cheese sauce. Oh, you don't get that joke, mm, case in point. And B, I feel like green really isn't your color, babes. Maybe, maybe give yellow a go or something. And here we go. So Karina is rocking the leather trench once again. I told you we're going to outfit repeat in this. All right, with it, she paired a thicker, more loose gray turtleneck and a white sock sneaker combo to give off like the ultimate dad vibes because like her father never wanted to be her dad. So she decided to just become her own dad. And now she's stuck with an odd interest in like building things, fishing and old time jazz. But like, oh well, here's to hoping she won't ever run into him once out getting that one pack of cigarettes that I'm sure he's still busy getting. <laughs> Here we got someone like a little bit special, Celeste. People sometimes look at her weird because she speaks very slow and deep, especially when talking to her plants, which she always refers to as her babies. Um, yeah. She's rocking a knitted cardigan, a crop top tied around her neck, brown Birkenstocks, and some random Bella Swan esque bag she bought when she was 12. And she has this annoying habit of having to inform you about the toxins inside of your cosmetics, but like that's her love language, I guess. So, um, yeah, deal with it. I saw Wendy's. Where y'all from? I saw. I saw. Here we got Chandler. She likes to look busy and like business-like and professional, even though I think the most business thing she's ever done is attending her bank appointment. Um, yeah. Anyways, she wears an oversized blazer with a crossbody back on top to keep the shape of her figure with a simple white top underneath and I don't know what it is about her. Like I already said, she like always seems so busy, but um I think she's got nothing going on, so what 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 is she doing all day? Leaving all my worries. Moving on, we got Cicely with a pink, soft, elegant, romantic top. And ever since, okay, I'm not gonna talk like that, don't worry. But Cecily, ever since watching Pride and Prejudice, has been obsessed with anything period drama related. So obviously, her style is very, like I already said, romantic, elegant, and soft. I feel like she loves making up fake scenarios in her head to the point that she oftentimes, like, actually pretends as though she's Jane Austen's tragic heroine, whereas in reality all she is is a child that maybe spent a little bit too much time alone during growing up and is now too good at entertaining herself rather than needing actual social interaction. Now I don't know why, but I felt like Canelle's our little solo traveler, so naturally she would pick a bright red statement piece to distract the locals from the fact that she doesn't understand a word they're saying yet, because currently she's trying to learn their language, and if you're like her and have ever tried learning a language, you know that it's nothing like this fun eat, pray, love montage if you're talking to a hot Italian. It's more so you spending tons of hours locked up in your room, trying, desperately trying to memorize that one irregular verb that is only used to ask a priest for absolvance after giving in and finally sending that one sugar daddy that has been chilling in your DMs for months your foot picks. Yeah, I did not do that. I feel like Cordelia is the ultimate proof that ignorance truly is bliss because while her outfit, sweater vest, and white blouse give her rather academic aura, what's her chunky heeled scream cigarette mom? And that is exactly why she chose it because although it sounds great that she has this like insatiable hunger for knowledge, it is actually a very masochistic way of life because the more she knows, the worse her depression is getting. But still, she just can't stop this endless cycle of reading and spiraling, creating more questions that she then tries to answer only to read more and spiral more each and every day. Hashtag pray for Cordelia. Here we got Clara. She's a casual, low effort type of girl who honestly, I couldn't really think of a character arch for. So just imagine her going to the post office 
Yes, she's a posty type of girl if I've ever seen one. Rock that package, girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's wearing an olive leather jacket on top of a simple crop top and her mom's slippers. <laughs> Sorry, I meant totally expensive Birkenstocks that I did not just randomly find somewhere and then include it in this outfit. Yes. Okay, so Cecil might be the reason why this is called 25-ish instead of 25 outfits because, okay, hear me out for one sec. I did the Cecily outfit, but I just, I did not feel as though all of my soft girls would wear something like this because some soft girls like a bit of edge and so I figured there's a bit of black in this hair scarf, which I think justifies me wearing my black dogs and bag in order to just make it more me because maybe actually I'm talking about myself here when I'm talking about those soft girls that don't like the completely soft look. So this one's for all my girls that love being a girly girl but still want to keep their grit. Okay, you can try to deny it, but I know you're lying. Clementine is who we all want to be because we all are her to some degree. You know, she's a hopeless romantic with such a naive and optimistic outlook in life that she is just sunshine bottled up in one human being. And outfit-wise, for a more put-together look, she tied her sweater over her shoulders with matching cherries printed onto her crop top. It's so cute. I'm sorry. Her bag is a woven basket she bought on a French island. Are you kidding me? Speaking of, she's trying to learn French because she feels like her face is meant to be able to speak French, right? No? Nobody agree? Well, I think so. Merci. I feel like Coralie is the definition of hard shell soft inside because she's wearing the same bralette and leather blazer as Caitlyn, but pairs it with dog's tied up hair and retro glasses, which I just think gives her like this effortless coolness. I don't know. She's just got this air about her and she's got big dreams on how to change our world. But up until now, all it is is ideas inside of her head that will definitely over time cause serious anger issues. But um... Next wop, we got clear. <laughs> no, clear. Cannot do an Australian accent. Um, whose outfit is simple, but her attitude and dark bra shining through is giving it the crucial characteristics to make it into more than just a simple top and jeans. And she has this deep love and appreciation for anything hip hop or rap related to the point that she started crying after hearing the first note from Kendrick Lamar's new album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, and could not get it together for the next four days. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I know this outfit is so basic, but I think it was my favorite one. Like, oh, just looking at it, I'm getting so excited. But okay, sorry, I have to read my script. Katie. Katie's convinced she spent her past life in the American 80s because when she first watched Dirty Dancing at six years old, it felt as though someone had shown her what home feels like, which is why now every time she feels a bit upset, she always has to turn it on because it's the only thing giving her true comfort. Like, true story. She wears an oversized white shirt with only the lowest button closed, cuffed jeans, and shoes like Baby herself. And yes, she is a terrible dancer, but Baby was too at the beginning of the movie okay so take your judgment elsewhere simon cowell thank you I feel like Colette is sort of the perfect trope of the kind loner because she needs her me time so much that a text back from her could be considered an artifact at this point, which is sort of why she's considered a bit of a bitch by most, but if you actually gave her a chance and talked to her, you would be surprised by how nice she actually is. It's just that some people have a harder time keeping up and that doesn't mean that they don't like you, it's just that not everything is about you, babes. Okay, not everything is about you. Anyways, she's rocking a black crop top, white shirt, and a tote bag to keep all of her philosophy, psychology, politics, whatever book she prefers over actual company, right by her side. Carla is a bit extraordinary, and I'm not saying that because she's wearing a half tucked in shirt, but because she realized she will literally die one day. So she officially resigned from caring about um anything. And if people want to make fun of her, all right, go ahead. Both of us will die and no one will care. So if she wants to do something, she will do it whether you're in or not. And feel free to continue living a life in constant fear of others judging you and holding yourself back because of someone that probably doesn't even care whether you're still alive tomorrow. Did I steal that line from the Smiths? No, I certainly did not. Let me know when you're ready to join the I Don't Care gang. Me and Carla are gonna be ready for you. And now, surprise, surprise, drum roll. This is our last candidate and it is yours truly, me. And also, surprise, surprise, all of these characters I just introduced are also part of me. Nobody saw that one coming, I know. Let it be the dirty dancing fanatic, the depressed student, the artsy one, or even our crunchy girl that would swap in having kids for living in the jungle immediately all me so if you like any of the fits or the people wearing them feel free to like subscribe and share maybe and yeah let me know what you think happy to have had you here love ya see ya have a good one goodbye
If you counted all of the characters, you might have noticed that these were only 24 because, well, the 25th one is right here because, I mean, come on. I had blue straight-legged jeans. I had a black turtleneck. Do you really think I'm not going to make a Steve Jobs character? Do you really think so? Well, you're wrong. Okay, bye. Love ya.